Welcome to my first vlog. I am super excited. Probably because I'm yet to comprehend how much time this is going to take to film and edit. But I will love that because it means I'll have somebody to talk to about sewing. You see, I have this burning desire to discuss sewing tips and sewing ideas and pairing fabric and pattern and blah 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 which is this is what probably sounds like to my friends and family because after about five minutes of sewing blah 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 their eyes start glazing over and they're just gone I'm just gonna talk to my heart's content to the impartial camera and then send that out into the universe and then hopefully there will be a couple of people will find it interesting remotely and um, might relate to it and um, that would be absolutely lovely so let's see what happens so this channel is going to be mainly about sewing because it's my main passion that kept re-emerging throughout my whole life and the last time I started sewing was about five years ago and I've been doing so for five years and this time around um, I was making an effort to improve my inside finishes and making sure that all my garments look beautiful on the inside where I can obviously where I was a bit pressed for time I would use an overlocker um, but I like to aim to have all my insides French seamed and beautifully finished and hand stitch even you see I'm one of those weird people who love doing the hand stitching hand sewing it's quite therapeutic I find it so mainly sewing a little bit of knitting when the mood takes me down that route I'm thinking of doing a little bit of embroidery I've done it when I was um, little and here and there. I find it beautiful when you have, for example, a lovely white shirt or like a plain top and you have some gorgeous embroidery on a collar or on a shoulder or on a cuff, you know, so I like to try and maybe incorporate that. And actually today, this morning, I've seen on Minerva website, uh, there was like a free pattern download of a DMC pattern. So I went down to DMC website and I've downloaded like I'm not even gonna exaggerate probably 50 patterns because <laughs> they're free you know who doesn't love free patterns right I think at some point I've, I'm gonna just have a go and, and um, plan some strategic placing of um, embroidery somewhere on, on one of my garments so um, a little bit about me I am originally from Ukraine um, I learned English as an adult so there is a slight possibility I will occasionally mispronounce a word or two but that's probably because I haven't used it before or I haven't heard somebody say it before so you feel free to correct me I don't get offended just do it nicely <laughs> my other interests um, are cooking reading researching fashion history i am absolutely obsessed about vintage patterns and um, vintage reproduction patterns i have a, quite a few in my library not as many as some others i've seen on youtube you guys <laughs> but um yeah i just love to look at them and, and touch them and just open them and and it just feels like traveling back in time you know what i mean i've only tried a couple of them but i do plan to to do some more of that whenever i make a toile i don't need that many alterations apart from the sleeves i find that the sleeves are usually quite tight whether that's me or it, they just liked it that way or they didn't raise arms very often in in the 30s or 40s i don't know <laughs> i was researching he very heavily actually in the past couple of years dressing for your body type and i'm not gonna open that that can of worm with the kibbe system but I did get quite deep into that um, I was trying to to understand 
what suits me, especially as a sewist, because we can't try something on before we actually make it and spend the time making it and spend the actual fabric. And then we try it on and we discover that it doesn't suit, whether the color is wrong or the design is not quite right for, for the figure, for our specific figure. So um, I wanted to eliminate those mistakes before I start sewing. Um, so I did research that quite a lot. Um, and I think I figured out where I am and I figured out what colors suit me. I, I used to read a lot and a lot and watch YouTube videos as well. There's some amazing channels out there like, oh my God, if you guys find it interesting, you know, sewing for you for your body type, I might elaborate on that later on. Let me know. I don't know. This is my only first blog, so <laughs> vlog. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's start with what I'm wearing. Simplicity 8875 dress, uh, version A, that I have made out of fabric, ever so kindly gifted to me by Minerva. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the fabric, I love the colour, I love the feel of it, I just love working with viscose and you know what, most of the stuff that I show you today is going to be made of viscose because I tend to stick with what I I like, if I like something I'll make five, like honestly you will see, <laughs> do not get me started on my dear and dosy Rocco collection, that's for another episode, but I do have a, a blog about it actually, um, I will leave the link to my blog um, in the um, comments if you're interested. With this dress, um, I've modified it a little bit. I've put some little ties um, in the back. The, the reason for that is because my weight fluctuates quite a lot. Um, actually, I think every four or so years I, I go down or up like a few sizes. And I've been like that my whole life. Um, I don't make any effort to lose weight or gain weight or it just happens. So I thought, you know what, when I lose weight <laughs> in my next phase, um, I'm just going to tighten it slightly and it's still going to be good to go, right? We're going to plan ahead. Um, then, so when I finish this dress, I put it on, it literally was like straight on my body and for me it's a no, 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 no. I decided to, to do away with the zipper. At that point I was like, you know what, um, no. So I took that out and I took uh, out five centimeters out of the middle, hence you see this seam here. So originally it was just literally a straight um, body with um, it's a yoke? What is it? So, as it stands now, I am very happy with it. Next dress we're going to look at is this one. The fabric is from Fabrics for All, which I absolutely love shopping at, by the way. They are absolutely amazing. It's Viscose Shelley, of course. I think it's Peter Horton. This dress is one of my absolute favorites. I wore it to work loads of times already. Well, mind you, I was only going to work like once a week, but um, I won it quite a few weeks. And um, the only modification I've made to this dress is to lengthen it by five centimeters. And that's it. Do I have any comments? No, it, I literally put it together super easily, put it on, good to go. No alterations, it fits like a glove. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And the one thing I want to say is when I make something new that I haven't made before, I always look at the finished garment measurements on the actual tissue patterns. And I'm, I'm now talking about the big four. So never you mind the back of the envelope. Yeah, that's fine. You have to check your measurements to choose the correct size range. But when you actually try to make something fairly fitted like this in the waist, for example, and in the bust, I would suggest you look at the tissue paper and so your finished garment measurements then will be indicated um, on your front pieces. Um, for your waist, I think on the front pieces at the bottom of a front bodice piece. Um, and then, you know, if you have trousers, then you have like a hip um, 
measurements on the trouser, trouser pieces so just unfold them and just check how you want for it to fit you um, because sometimes you know you just never know they come out too big or too small but I've been doing this for several, several years now and I don't go too wrong actually with doing that especially with the dresses so yes love my next make is the Cassie dress. How cute is this? I love the fabric so much. The buttons I had in my stash, they're like a metal hollow shank buttons, I think. They're quite lightweight, but I think for this fabric and for so many colors in, in one fabric, I think I wanted something shiny that would stand out because if you chose any of these colors that are in a fabric it would totally get lost i love the fabric which i actually purchased from minerva and the price of price it's viscose shelly of course um might be peter horton mm. i will put the link down below if they still have this fabric it's absolutely dream to work with and i just absolutely adore the colors the pattern was vogue easy options 9371 I made a version E I think it's a straighter one but slightly longer than the other one I think it's version E um, a very very straightforward make um, literally had no problems whatsoever let me just open it up and show you shall we do that Oh, look at this belt whilst we're at it. It's gorgeous. I love um, big wide belts. Yeah, it's almost like a ribbon and a present. You know, the candy dress and then there's like a ribbon on top. I have put a French seams everywhere. This is the back seam. It takes a lot of ironing, um, but I find it quite therapeutic. And um, shoulder seam. I did two different colors of um, bias binding on the sleeve. <laughs> um, I don't know why, probably had to use them up. Um, and I do know also, every time I make something and I have a bit of leftover, I always cut it up for a bias binding. So I've got a selection of different fun fabrics like a viscose bias binding for viscose, my future viscose makes, and also cotton bias binding for my future cotton makes. Um, it's quite a fun, I'll always have like half a day cutting them up and ironing them and then folding them up into, do you, do you see what I mean? It's one thing leads into another. So this is my cotton bias binding box just FYI because we're talking about it <laughs> um, yeah so I fold it neatly and then I just put like a little pin in there and then I just um, put it in there ready ready to go when I want my Hong Kong finishes or if I want um, to do proper bias binding I have like a little tool that folds it and then you feed it into one end and it comes out on the other end and you're like ha and you just like iron it you know what I mean I think you get an idea. A very lovely dress. This one I actually wore as a dress with an open collar and then I also wore it on top of jeans as a shirt but then I found it, it looks better if I button it all the way up and then unbutton it starting from the waist down so it looks like a very long shirt, very stylish actually. Um, I'll try to take you some, some pictures for you both ways. And if I manage to do that, and if I manage to figure out how to put them into this first vlog of mine, um, I will. It will go somewhere, somewhere. Just keep an eye out, okay? I'm doing so well. <laughs> so my next make and my last viscous Charlie project for December is this Deer and Doe <laughs> Myosotis dress. This was my first time making Myosotis dress. 
and I absolutely adore it. I've made some alterations, some of which were probably unnecessary, so I will have to retrace the pattern and undo them for my next make, which there is going to be a next make because I love the way this dress looks um, on me. What I did is I lengthened the bodice think it was by two inches or something like that on the pattern and on Instagram I saw that the bodice looks quite short and um, I am quite tall I'm 5'9 and I find it that the short bodices don't look right on me I don't I don't like it so I just went and automatically lengthened it and it was just a tad a tad too long <laughs> but never you mind because I put some um, um, Oh my god, my mind just went blank. Ties! Yeah! <laughs> Me speaking no English. <sighs> I'll probably cut this out, I'm pretty sure I will. Um, so I put some ties on the sides so that I can tie it in the back, make it look a bit more fitted if I fancy it, or just have it be free and floppy. Um, the sleeves I modified into belt sleeves. This belt sleeve is actually longer than this belt sleeve. You can actually just pull it up, up your arm if you're doing some dishes or making a cup of tea. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know what? This fabric, let's just move on to the fabric, okay? This is from Minerva. Again, I bought this and it's viscose shari. The color, I'm dying. This color is everything. I knew what I was doing because I knew that would go with that. Um, so there you go, perfect match. For the buttons, I think I've had these buttons that I cut off some shirt and I've had these six buttons and I wanted to get away with three so that I have the other three for another my sausage dress but it needed four in the end so I had to it was just a bit too low cut a bit too low so I had to put an extra one and make an extra buttonhole I just love looking on the inside of my dresses because they're like super tidy so with the sleeves this time I did a French finish on the whole sleeve I don't know whether you can see or not but I literally just stitched the sleeves wrong sides together and then treated that seam all the way around as a French seam super easy like oh my god so easy no ripples no wrinkles anywhere viscose that's why i love viscose okay and obviously all the other seams are all french seams the facing was bias bound with my cute little bias binding and then i used a little piece of white just a plain viscose shally to do the under side of collar um I love this dress so much I'm literally I can't decide which fabric to use next but this I will be making another one this month I think this is going to be January now you see this so yes I will be making another Maya Sotis in January do you know what guys I get it you know you know all of the people who made like hundreds of Maya Sotis dresses I get it now yep I think another five slash seven of these are coming <laughs> and you might even see them featured on my blog so my next dress is a butterick vintage pattern reproduction butterick 6374 retro pattern um and i made the black dress just exactly as it is how original of me <laughs> um and this is what I got. I don't know how, whether you'll be able to see this black on camera. Um, I had really lovely, sparkly, multifaceted 
buttons that give it a little bit of interest and I absolutely love this seam here um, and the shawl collar you know what I just love this dress it just fits me like a glove um, I already have planned I'm not gonna pull this fabric out because like literally a whole pile of fabric will collapse on the floor if I do that but I already have a fabric in mind this fabric is a mystery polyester bubble crepe from my stash god knows where I got it from it could have been from the textile center could have been um, it's super light yes it's just quite pleasant actually to wear given that it's polyester so this dress these buttons are just for um, decoration they're not functional buttons what you have is you have a side zipper and you also have big 1940s shoulder pads I love them I made them from scratch from cotton cotton wadding is it called wadding this this is what you put into quilts so I bought a whole a big length of I think it was like uh, two meters by 150 whatever like a big just for shoulder pads specifically and I washed it according to the instructions and I washed it in warm water not in the machine but I pre-shrunk it um, I still don't know whether I should take them out when I put this dress in the wash because the dress is obviously polyester I wonder if my shoulder pads will shrink to half the size <laughs> if I check it into a washing machine I don't know you guys I love this dress um, it's just absolutely it just makes me feel very sassy you know like it makes me want to wear a little hat like a hat or like a half hat or something with like a little something maybe I should like look into hat making <laughs> I don't know and the last make I'm showing you today is PJs the fabric was received from Minerva again uh, in exchange for a blog post and I'm just going to tell you quickly about it pattern is McCall's 8056 and I went for top D with long sleeves and a pants F which is a wider one so the fabric is um, cotton lawn absolutely gorgeous the quality is just it's like a it's like a buttery silky a fabric it's just it's hard to explain I just cotton lawn is another one of my of my obsessions <laughs> but I've I had the whole wardrobe made of cotton lawn in summer like I literally had like 10 dresses made of cotton lawn the piping I did my best with you've got um, for the trousers you've got these bits at the bottom of the trousers which I used the piping on as well I already slept in it and it's absolutely super cozy um, the belt has two ties and a partially a elastic in the back and then your ties are connected to it about at this point it looks massive oh my god like honestly I'm not that big I promise like <laughs> you can tie it you can make it smaller I promise you so yeah this is my PJs um, I always wanted a set of long long leg PJs just in case if I ever go traveling somewhere where it's colder at night than our house I wanted to have something longer and now I do and the color is just like super cute I think there's something like quite vintagey about it don't you think I think it's adorable I think it goes with my eyes what do you think <laughs> okay so this is it I guess I guess um, I'm just gonna now cut out all the scary bits and bit, the bits where I was a bit clowny <laughs> and the bits that made me cringe too hard just those otherwise there will be nothing left I have to get used to look at myself um, on the screen it's not something that comes naturally 
and I'm sure that those of you who vlog you will understand so anyway I'm wishing you guys an absolutely amazing 2021 I'm wishing you a completely different 2021 year from the previous year that's my wish I hope I'll see you soon well I'll see you soon I hope you come back have a good one bye